Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Just get another one. Yeah, but where does it go? Oh, I know where it is. What? Ha! Ha! <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. We're in. We're in. Okay. All right. Welcome back. Happy Friday. To everyone on this uh, October live stream, uh, first, before yeah. we get going, we got a lot of things to talk about. Yeah. First, uh, we'll have a very special live stream next Friday. The it's going to be spooky October live stream. Yeah. Halloween. Yeah. Halloween special. So we have some fun things lined <laughs> we'll up. Talk about a lot of spooky encounters in the woods. Yeah, we have a lot of fun things lined up. So uh, next <laughs> Friday... We will be back for the Halloween special. Will you do me a favor? Will you turn down my the headphones? The one, that one. Yeah, there you go. Go a little more. There we go. Uh, I'll, I'll bring it up a little bit. There we go. Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right, welcome back. A lot of things to talk about. First thing is, uh, what are we trying tonight? The Knob. Yeah, we're trying the Knob Creek Twelve Year. We know it's called Knob Creek, by the way. I know. So, a uh, little, a quick backstory. So, yeah. um, last year, that we yeah. we got the release of the Knob Creek fifteen hundred dollar bottle, and was like tasted like a fifteen dollar bottle. No, it tasted bourbon. worse. Well, I don't know. Fifteen <laughs> bucks. Like, what bourbon are you buying for fifteen dollars? I don't know. But this is the twelve year, and this was seventy bucks. So that was seventy. Yes. Yeah, is that hard to get? it's it's not easy is it the same thing that thing just sits around in the bottle for three extra years not in the bottle in the barrel whatever but is it the same thing maybe and it just sits there yeah yeah okay all right we'll see i don't know I'm, we haven't been too happy with knob creek and, and a lot of people love it do they yeah like i will tra- say Travis the widow the creek. widow jane that we had last week was fantastic yeah that was good travis right. goes crazy over is this hard to find yeah it is yeah. okay. All right. Uh, was it was it a Saturday morning pick? Yeah. Oh, you even got the Buffalo Trace cubes with the Buffalo imprint on them. Yeah. Those are your cubes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Always. All right. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Give it a smell. It smells like bourbon. <laughs> Doesn't smell good. See, nothing special. It's better than the fifteen. It I is think. better than the fifteen. Yeah. Um, okay. Good. All right. Okay. First, first item of business, and Andy started talking about this <laughs> off stream. So this happens a lot <laughs> before we're podcasting. We st- we get into like a really good topic of conversation. Did you park in my garage, by the way? No. Did you close the garage door? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we get into like a good conversation, and I'm like, no, no, shut up, save it for the podcast. So. First non backpacking related news. We gotta get to Brian Laundry too. That's a that's a big one. Okay, so Alec Baldwin killed a girl, shot some girl and killed her. So and it, wounded another person. He's uh he is out of the hospital. So we do have back. We actually do have a really good backpacker related story. But this one just happened yesterday. First, I was watching the TV, <laughs> and I'm watching the news, and the news banner across the bottom is literally. Alec Baldwin shoots and kills somebody. And I was like, <laughs> what? So it's I want terrible. It's, it's awful. Terrible. It's awful. I want you to explain. Well, I'll give the macro view before you. I want you to get into the technical thing you were talking about earlier. But what happened was he's on the set of a movie. A Western. A Western. It's called Rust. And um, he thought there was either nothing in the gun that doesn't make sense he, there was a blank in the gun anyway he was fired a gun on set and what whatever happened we don't know the the details but there was something in that gun or i want you to talk about the blank thing but anyway the director of photography got shot and the director got shot 
they airlifted them out. The director of photography sadly didn't either died in flight or died yeah. when she got there. And she then the, like, yeah. And then the, the director was released the next day with like minor wounds. So, all right, I want Terrible. you to describe. Andy has, Andy, I, I have some experience because when the, when I first heard this, I remember you telling me that even when you fire a blank, something comes out. Well, yeah, okay, I have some experience with with firearms that fire blanks. Do you want to tell people why? How you have a? Uh, you, yeah, I have had I have had some reenacting experience. Okay, okay. so <clears throat> first of all. There's different reporting coming out about like what actually happened. So there's reporting coming out that oh, okay, that's that's yeah, not good. It's okay. Yeah, there's reported. There was a report that I saw this morning that said that um, a live round got into the revolver. So okay, that that report that is crazy. If if it's true, yeah. I hadn't seen that. But I want you to answer yeah. the question of. If there is a blank yes. in the gun. So blanks are very dangerous, actually. And I know some people have said that in the chat. Um, well, can, it, can it can it kill somebody? Yes. First of all, yeah. shout out to my, uh, yeah. my shirt. You can't see it. Oh, that doesn't help. Yeah, it's, a big, it's a big foot shirt. Okay. Yeah, blank can kill somebody. What is coming out of a gun when if it's a blank? Well, if it's a blank, it's just... It, and why don't you describe what a blank is if, if people don't, don't know? Okay. A blank is basically a cartridge with just powder in it and they crimp the end of it. So there's no bullet that sits on the, uh -huh. on the on Oh, the so it's the same as a, it's the same powder as a bullet. Yeah. Just less of it. And they don't put a bullet on it. Obviously. They don't put a bullet on it. Okay. Now one of the, I did not know that. Yeah. And so they, they, most blanks, they'll like crimp the end of it. So you like, you know, like the brass case. Yeah. And they'll just like crimp it. You should have brought some to, for to, this. Yeah. To seal in the powder. And so, um, you know, there's different, like, there's different methodologies with, like, how much powder is in a blank. It depends on, like, how loud you want the boom to right. be. So, for example, like, like military blanks for, like, their, like, M4s and M16s, like, their 5.56, they're, like, little, like, pop, 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 pop. Like, like for training? Yeah, just, like, really, okay. like, like, really wimpy. Okay. So, then you've got, like, these, these manufacturers out there that make blanks for, like, Hollywood sets. That like they like like they're it's the real they're loud as shit yeah they're loud okay they, they put a lot more powder in them and so depending on the type of weapon that you're shooting a blank from okay so like most semi automatic we semi automatic weapons when they rely on the gas pressure of a of a round a live round to cycle oh to it. cycle right okay. so when you're firing a blank there isn't as much gas pressure so the gun oftentimes won't cycle it so how do they fix that so how do you fix that is, That's an interesting point. Yeah. So how you fix that is you put something called a BFA or a blank firing adapter on the gun. And what that does is that makes the hole on the, the, the end of the gun uh -huh. smaller. So uh -huh. more gas oh, okay. goes back. Oh, that's very cool. So that cycles the bolt. So when you're talking These about... These were cowboy guns, though. Right. So so let me talk... But And that wouldn't impact what comes out well, of the gun, well, right? Hold on a second. So there have been issues where if you don't have your your BFA attached correctly, like some of them screw in, it depends on the type of gun, You and you have a hot blank, you could shoot that BFA. What's a hot blank? Like a lot of powder in it. Okay. So let's say... Oh, let's, you could shoot the thing off the yeah. top of the gun? You could shoot the blank firing adapter out, and that's dangerous, real dangerous. That thing's probably coming out hot. Yeah. Um, and so you also have to think about like the size of the hole for the blank firing adapter corresponds with the type of blank you're using that makes sense so let's say you're using a really tiny hole and then yeah. you accidentally put like a really hot blank in it yeah it's like you're gonna blow that thing apart okay so okay so he could have had a he could have had this blank firing adapter in his gun and he could have had a blank round that had a ton of juice in it yeah and it could have shot this thing off yeah. now to be fair like, nothing but the, the blank itself when it fires like it's, Nothing it's, other than gas comes out the top, the front. Gas right? and and ex, and burnt powder. Okay. Okay. Now, no projectile. No. So Pro some. So this wasn't. I thought at first. Oh, this is. Just, this was a true blank. He was just too close to somebody. Yeah, no. Clearly, there was something else going yeah. on. So what could happen too is like with a lot of these like Hollywood prop weapons, to like to to be considered like okay, like if you don't want it, like if you're if you're like a prop company and like you do firearms, you might. It, it could be easier to transport these 
props around and like you turn them into like props instead of actual firearms like uh-huh. decommission them yeah and so you can do some things to it but like you could take like for example they were using i imagine like some like six shooters right that's what i assume they probably had like the barrel filled so that you couldn't like that makes sense maybe you couldn't like fire a real round and maybe that exploded and so and put shrapnel down there. I don't know, but it's kind of weird when it says it killed one person and, and wounded another. So then it's, so it's like, it's like, a yeah. Spread. So like how, how did that happen? Was it like a bullet? Like, so if it was a live round, like Someone, so, someone's getting sued. Oh yeah. Some, somebody, um, some, something bad, something bad happened. And if that was a live round that got in, look, so like, well, that is another. So like my imagine, question was imagine like the controls in place that failed, like how many people were involved in, in getting, they on. didn't have proper checklists. Yeah. My question was, let's say someone put a live round, let's say some nefarious actor mm-hmm. put a live round in the gun, but this there was how, like one of these blank firing hey, adapters. This is how uh, Bruce Lee's son. I did. know. Yeah. I know. I saw that. Oh, yeah. Somebody just posted about that. So yeah. let's say someone put a live round in there, but they had this like blank firing adapter on the front or they filled the barrel. Would yeah. the live round be able to go through that? Um, probably not, but it might explode. So like, I don't, so that, so that doesn't make sense. Then it does. Like the, like it would hit and you basically have a huge explosion, like the bullet, like shredding through something. Yeah. It could be very dangerous for the person firing it. Now here's some crazy things to think about too. There has been re- there has been multiple instances in like different types of reenactments where live rounds have accidentally gotten into the mix. How does that happen? Stupidity. Okay, right. So, so, Obviously. So let me let me give you a scenario. So like you've got let's say let's say you're doing like a World War II reenactment and you you've got like a <coughs> you got a bunch of blank 30 out 6. Yeah. For your your M1 Garand. You know a bunch of blanks, you got a ammunition tin full of blanks. Yeah. And right next to it, you got your 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 live. Don't, yeah. do, well, those two things should yeah. never be stored right yeah, next I to know, each exactly. other. Exactly. So you got <laughs> so you got your live thirty out six, you know. And they look. I mean, outside of noticing that, <laughs> that's they, like storing gasoline next to like I don't know, flame a bunch of explosives or <laughs> yeah. something. So then you're like, you know, you've got idiot, you know, playing around with the thirty out six, playing around with the blanks, and then you might accidentally get one in there. And then you're loading up, you're at your, your World War II reenactment, and you're loading your, your clips for your M1 Grand, and you accidentally slip a, a live 30 out 6 in there. You know, it's interesting. Uh, we I think about the legality aspects of this. So, it, oh, our, oh our, somebody just posted that. It six, froze. Hold on. Keep oh. talking. Somebody just post? somebody just posted that six members of the crew walked off the set the day before because of safety concerns. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the cinematographer. Yeah. 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 Um, let me just Google Alec Baldwin kills somebody. But I mean, he has to live with this now. Yeah. He has to live with the fact that somebody screwed up and he shot, I'm I'm guessing shot somebody. and And now notice how this, this has been the first time in like three weeks that this is frozen weird yeah so that's one thing i actually did want to bring up imagine the the mental weight i mean he obviously it was a mistake but he murdered somebody yeah and it, i also read that like he went to the sheriff's I guess office murder might not be the correct term. i, I don't think it's murder good. maybe implies intent yeah what I, if now what if alec baldwin really did want to kill this person the greatest cover-up of a murder of all time so the name of the cinematographer or, or director of photography Helen, Hel, helena Hel, hutchins helena 42. 42 it's so sad struck in the chest so sad died. joel souza 48 the film's director was shot in the shoulder area it sounds like it was like a bunch of shrapnel i be, so here's my prediction that's enough momentum to kill someone i guess if they're like think if about they're, a grenade I well mean, yeah i mean if they're like filming and they're in their state i mean the director of photography is probably standing like I mean, right behind the cameras. So, like, here's here's my conspiracy theory. Like, and you know, the cameras were rolling. Yeah. Oh yeah. So my conspiracy theory is it was like a de- a demilled peacemaker. So the barrel was probably filled, but it had a hole through it. The gas and yeah. fireball could come out of. They put like a hot round or an accidental or an accidental like real round in there. He shot it. The thing explode. 
pushed a bunch of shrapnel down range and killed. That's enough to kill people. Oh, yeah. You would think that the... First off, I am assuming that movie sets have the like the equivalent of occupational health and safety. They're all unionized, so I'm sure they do. You would think that a rule would be, even if you're using blanks or anything, nobody's standing in front of where they're firing. Well, yeah, and you know that's like like, except the camera if they need to fire into the camera. Yeah, and that's actually kind of like a another reenacting rule too. Like when you're like when you're at a reenactment or like some type of tactical thing and you're Uh shooting blanks you're you're never you're never supposed to aim it at people so so period so that was my thing i was like so i i guess like in most tragic accidents i guess like several things have to go wrong for something like this to happen yeah yeah for sure this um so (coughs) so uh on tiktok do you know what tiktok's i get now it's really it's really (laughs) creepy but I get um, people, it's just really morbid. Um, a big thing on TikTok is uh, people get the black box recordings of flights. And then they, no, but here's what they do. They have a Microsoft flight simulator. That, and they, they show you the Microsoft flight simulator as, while as they the, play the, the audio. Yeah. And so many of these accidents are just stupid mistakes. Like stupid mistakes. Like one one... Well, have you ever read the tire plane died? The dudes just took off on the wrong runway. <laughs> have, you, have you ever read uh, the checklist manifesto? No, but you always talk about it. It's like checklists, I mean, checklists, like just well, save lives. Like, yeah. like half of the book is specifically about the checklist for the airline industry. Yeah. Well, when I think of like pre-flight, when I think of checklists, I think of like pre-flight checklists. And that's like what I think of like where checklists come from. <laughs> but so many of these aviation accidents, and I'm not talking about like your like Southwest American. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like people in like little planes or like private jets, like literally one, like a, they were just on the wrong runway. You know, that's check, check box one. Am I on the right runway that they told me to go on? And just all these just like stupid, careless ways people die. It's really crazy. Yeah. This is just really sad. And uh, so sad. Yeah. Sad for everybody. Yeah. It's, I mean, terrible loss of life. And then, I mean, imagine being Baldwin and having done I that. mean, you just, you, I mean, you just killed somebody. Yeah. Um, yeah. We should not ignore the comments, but I have the next story to talk about, which is also very morbid. And you probably, do you know what I'm going to talk about? Brian Landry? Nope. We're not there yet. Also a death related thing to discuss. Um, should we be saving this for Halloween? No, no, we got we got uh, supernatural spooky things uh, <laughs> next, next Friday. I wanted to do the Halloween thing this week, but... Halloween's next weekend. Yeah. We gotta wait. So, you didn't see the when I the piece of news out of Mohican. I, I did. Don't I, laugh. I did. No, it's terrible. So, it's terrible. Uh, there's I, a there's I, a what? I didn't know that's where you were going. Well, it's a it's a hot thing. Yeah, go ahead. So, um, there's a, a state forest. Andy and I go to all the time. We've got like tons of videos there, and it, dude, this happens every year in Ohio. Woman's out there hiking, tree branch falls on her and kills her instantly. Yeah. Widowmaker. I know. And you know. That's how somebody died on the PCT last year. Were they hiking? Yeah. See, that's what's crazy to me is I'm always terrified about them when I'm sleeping. The one last. But everyone, I, every story I've seen, they're well, they're hiking. Yeah, the one last year. And then don't you think you would have heard it? It happens so quick. It's hard to say. And then plus, like, there's no way that branch isn't making noise. You might hear it, but then it's confusing on like where it's going to be. I know that's the other thing. Yeah, I, I, it was either last year or the year before on the PCT where it was Oregon or Washington. Somebody was crossing a bridge over a creek, and a tree fell like kind of like kind of perpendicular down the bridge and killed somebody. Like it fell on the bridge. Yeah. No, wait, perpendicular or parallel? Uh, Parallel, sorry, down the bridge. Oh, and you think, I think about the statistical odds of this happening. Like this woman was out there at Mohican just trotting along and the odds of her walking and being right in the path as the tree comes down. And it was a branch. It wasn't a tree. It's crazy. Um, Super sad. It happened. So another instance of this happened Last year, or two years, do you remember that story? No. And it wasn't random chance. It was a group of kids. Do you remember that? No. Knocking Hills? 
Mm-mm. They got charged with manslaughter. Oh, for the random one, the like they like they like saw, pre-sawed a branch. No, I I don't know. Wow, well, maybe, but uh, I think this was two years ago. So in Hocking Hills, another very faint, you know, outdoorsy part of Ohio, this woman uh, was just out there like shooting uh, photography, just shooting cool stuff, and this group of teenagers. <laughs> somehow I don't remember they didn't throw the branch on her but I think they broke a branch and it fell on her anyway they they got charged with manslaughter um they're obviously going to juvie but same thing happened and it's just it's terrifying because I'm always I'm like always worried about it happening while I'm sleeping yeah but it, it doesn't seem to be the case it's, it's happened to me yeah, it has happened to you. You should tell that story. Uh, this was in Michigan probably like over 10 years ago, way before the Backpacking Channel. I was with uh, uh, my friend Jason and our other friend Wallace, and we were backpacking up near Sleeping Bear Dunes. And we were, uh, it was it was uh, fall, and it was uh, storming at night, and uh, like a spruce fell between uh, my tent and Jason's tent, and we were probably 10 feet apart. Like it fell in between you guys. It fell in between us, and he we heard it coming down, and I went into the fetal position, and Jason. You didn't get out of your tent. No, I couldn't. Not it was you know you're like half asleep, and you kind of hear it, and you're like, what's going on? And then it just, you could, and then it starts coming down. But I, when I got out, Jason had jumped up inside of his tent. He had like a little Dyneema thing, and he lifted his arms up and pulled out all the stakes and like rolled. Yeah, see that is what I think. <laughs> If I, I if I had the wherewithal with me, like to like yeah. get up and move the tent, no, because if you like thrashed your yeah. body, you could move the tent. Yeah, when we looked at like the actual tree that came down, it pro- probably wouldn't have killed you, but it like caught you off guard. It was like would it have broken was, a bone. Yeah, it was like this one. I mean, still, even if yeah. it breaks something, yeah. if you're out in the woods, that's a potentially lethal mm-hmm. kind of in- situation. Yeah, it's terrifying to think about, you know. I don't know. I, that's I mean that's the we number, always check our trees. That's the number one. Isn't I? I don't have the data oh, to support this. Good, good stat, but yeah, <laughs> I don't have the data to support this. But I think that that's like the number one killer of of backpackers. Get out of here, trees. Google that. Number one killer of backpackers is widowmakers. Probably. Just Google number one killer of backpackers. Because I gotta think like bee stings. <laughs> Or like uh, ba- murders, <laughs> backpacker murders comes up. Like murders, not not a far off one. Dude, this guy, he's all over Google. Who? Ivan Milat was best known as the backpacker murderer, convicted of seven murders of backpackers in Australia. When? Uh, um, he died in 2019. Between 89 and 93. So that is another thing to discuss because <laughs> do you remember what happened two yes. years ago? Yeah. So two years ago. The psychopaths you, are climbing up towards Widowmakers. Yeah. So two years ago, we'll get that dude's name. And whatever uh, happened to him? Did he die? I don't know. So if you uh, got, if everyone recalls two years ago or maybe three years ago on the AT um, right outside of Damascus, and I only know this because a judge it, found James Jordan not. Oh, that's right. I remember this. Not guilty by reason of insanity in the fatal stabbing of Ronald Sanchez Jr. along the trail in 2019. Really, he's now. I, we got to talk to a lawyer. Does that mean he's set free? No, it means he's got to live in a mental institution for the rest of his life. I'm assuming. Yeah. So um, this story, 2019, two years ago. This made big headlines. Uh, a guy yeah, right outside Damascus. Did he murder two people? He st- wounded another one. Remember they talked about the girl that was wounded that... And she ran? The through hiker that ran and made like six miles while stabbed in the dark, made it out to the road. Yeah, so this guy... Um, and the, the really sad thing about the story is this guy like threw red flags for weeks. Like all these people... Like were... Like they, no one was surprised. I remember... That wasn't there like some cops at one of the towns mm-hmm. and they couldn't do anything about it. Like they wanted to like hold this guy on charges, but they couldn't do anything. Anyway, this crazy guy. I mean, this is just like the stuff nightmares are made of. Uh, he just stat. Was it a machete? Uh, I don't know. Some type of. He, he just went up to people while they were sleeping and just like hacked them in their tents. Uh, he killed. Was he killed two people? 
He killed two people and he wounded <laughs> Andy. Okay. Well, a vehicle. Oh, yeah, so anyway, he killed two people and wounded some other. And one of the wounded women uh, ran through the night. And this is in Virginia on the AT and made it to a road. And if we went back, back in there like two weeks after this happened. Oh my God. So Andy's trying to find a, uh, uh, highest cause uh, of death. I think exposure wins. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, where's uh, Tr- Widowmaker? Oh, you don't I know. don't know. Is it up there? I saw vehicle accidents up there. They yeah. get hitting. I don't know. I think exposure is winning. Falling. Yeah. Vehicle accidents. But this doesn't say drowning this is data from people visiting national parks okay not backpackers yeah what's that what's the top one exposure drowning okay so the highest cause of death of people visiting national parks is drowning what's the second one no no this is fatalities at national parks from 2007 to 2013 365 drownings 210 vehicle accidents falling 178 where's bears four bears are on there yeah what the heck not not Widowmakers? I like a pre-existing medical conditions. <laughs> Five firearm accidents. Heat exposure. Hey, bear's in there. Bear made the graph. Yeah. What's, what the about, bottom, what's the bottom one? All others? Other wildlife, too. What do you think that is? Coyotes? No, that'd be mountain like lions? mountain lions, maybe. Bears made the scoreboard. 50% less is other wildlife. Yeah. Okay. Fall. Fall makes total sense for backpackers. Oh, let me see what. Let me see if they have the other wildlife category. Do they talk about it? Oh yeah. Uh. Oh. What is it? Um. One of them would be like the selfie with the buffalo at now at Yellowstone. Is it say that? Well, they said like the par- uh decided to put. Oh wait, it's an elk. An elk. A, a bull, bull elk. They t- were trying to think. <laughs> Photographer strayed oh. too close to a young bull elk, triggering its defense instinct. They had to kill the elk. I never heard. I didn't know elk killed people. Uh, yeah. They put the elk down. That's sad because this idiot with a camera wouldn't get out of his face. Yeah, they don't say what the other one was. But there were two. Yeah. There were two other animal. It's yeah. got to be mountain lion. No, now it's got me thinking about like the tourists that put their kids on top of like the buffalo. In do people really do that? Oh, yeah. That's so stupid. <laughs> Okay, I learned today uh, elk kill people. I didn't know that. I guess moose kill people, right? Yeah. So it kind of makes sense. Firearm accident, what's that? As That's like, that's um, freaking Alec Baldwin. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's interesting if they were filming in New Mexico and if that was on like public land or something and they had a permit for it, that might make some like stat. It's definitely going to make a stat. Um, hopefully... This is a wake-up call for these people to make their movie sets safe, you know? Exposure's number one, right? That just means dying outside, no, right? No. no what, I mean, what is the de- definition of dying from exposure? Uh, exposure deaths are often predicted on either an injury, which prevents a victim from reaching safety. So meaning you're injured and okay. you can't get to safety or getting lost. You know what this makes me think of? Did you see the ultra marathon like two weeks ago where the storm rolled in? Mm-mm. Google that and the uh, okay. Do do you remember like six months ago we talked about the ultra marathon in China? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that nobody died, but that happened in the <laughs> in U.S. China? No, oh yeah, no, no, in China a oh, bunch yeah. of people died. The same thing happened. I think two weeks ago there was an ultra marathon. I want to say it's in Utah, and yeah, because it happened during the Moab 240, and the Moab 240 people had to go help. Yeah, you know what's you know what's interesting about the those races. Is they they give you you're required to carry an emergency bivy and a spot device at, on you at all times. A bivy, mm-hmm. like really? One of those mylar ones. Yeah, I'd be like a mylar bivy. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Like one of those, like yeah, the, they're required to carry them and a spot. And like I saw pictures of like registration, like you pick up your spot and you pick up your mylar bivy. It's crazy to me that they're even having ultra marathons if there's a chance that a blizzard is coming through. Well, they're in the mountains, like that can be. Like yeah, but there's there, these are in like. August, July. I mean, I guess I know you can get snow, but it seems like a you could forecast. Hey, we got twelve inches of snow coming in. Maybe I mean, obviously they don't, or they're like it's not a big deal. But anyway, this happened again. It happened in China like last year, and a bunch of people died. And then it happened like two weeks ago in Utah. Nobody died, thankfully, but they had to like send out search and rescue to get these people. Yeah, I mean, I've been asking for my race registration back or 
Yeah, but when you're so fatigued like that. That's the other thing. Right. That That's not helping. Yeah. You know, if you're like on mile 70 and you're you're going to be in shorts and a t-shirt and like a little like like a ult- ultimate turn. direction vest. <laughs> You know, yeah, that's and why they like yeah. Solomon hat. I mean, that's why <laughs> the dub drops. Yeah, I mean, that's why everybody car- wears the Solomon vest because you you got to put like you got to carry that bivy in there, and then maybe like a rain like a wind layer. You think a um, a mylar bivy is saving <coughs> you? Yeah, you think they're that oh, warm? Yeah. yeah. If you're in shorts and a t-shirt yeah. and it drops to like 20 degrees it'll, and you get 12 inches of snow, it'll, it might keep you lo- alive long enough for help to get to you. Okay. I mean, that makes sense, I guess. And I mean, I, I'm trying to remember if the people in China had GPS beacons. I don't think they did. Uh-oh. What? So, going back to the shooting at the, the yeah, Baldwin we, shooting. I, we got some good, get, get, go through the comments. Richard Bannister says, crew walked out based on pay and hotel reimbursement. One of the crew said the woman shot was lobbying for better set safety. Oh. Yeah. So is this uh, like conspiracy theory now? I don't know. I think a lot's going to come out. Do you know? True story. So obviously, obviously there's going to be some lawsuits, right? Do you know what insurance has decided historically the value of a human life is? Well, it depends. It depends on if I just watched that stupid movie on Netflix where the, it wasn't stupid. It was actually... I take that back. It was actually pretty good. It was about the um, the government group that was put together. A sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about that. Did you? Was that a good movie? It was good. I wanted to watch it. But the, what's it called? Like uh, fund. fund. He's talking about the movie with um, Batman, yeah. Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton about uh, the September 11th yeah. uh, survivors he was fund. Signed like the special commission or whatever the the title. You was. know, I didn't know that that happened. I didn't realize the government. Everybody who died in 9-11, the government just gave you a lot of money. Not everybody. Not, but they, they had a fund, what, thousands of people? Yeah, they they got like, according to the movie, they got like 94, 95% of the victims. Um, and and then, what, 3,000 people died? Uh, I think it was more than that. But it, it also included, um, it, it included a lot, I forget, it included a lot of different things. But basically you signed your, you signed away rights to sue. So you, could, you couldn't sue, right? Yeah, get yeah. this. They, they did it specifically to protect the airline industry. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. well, in the previews, they, they say yeah, that. Yeah, and so you, you gave away your rights to any type of legal action against the airline industry. But where I was going with this is that they determined the cost of a life based on your income. Yeah, yeah. And so a few other things, like your kids, dependents, like that type of stuff. I'm talking about, like, not the 9-11 stuff. Well, I would, I'm just guessing it would probably be depending Based on income, it's ten mil. That's a lot different than. Yeah, I know. The, I know. They were, I, they I'm were saying like two hundred thousand. I know. People. I know. And that's because these were poor people that died, right? Some of them. Yeah. And they so the poor and, people and, died. They didn't give them that much money, which and, is and so the, screwed up. And the and the worst part too is, and this is in the movie, like some of like the you know some of the CEOs who were working in the building, they got millions. Yeah, and that's how they that's how they did it. It's like if you died and you made a million dollars a year. You they got to give you that, and and because that's what you could sue the airline industry for, right? And they threatened. Did anyone not take the money? Yes, and then and sued the airline industry. I don't know, but there were people who refused to be part of it, so they did not waive their legal obligation. I don't know if they got sued because you would think I might be able to get more money suing the airlines directly. You know, I think that I think the people who, at least the way that they. Per- portrayed it in the movie some of the people who didn't take it it wasn't a money thing it was like i i know i get like, that like, yeah, yeah, F yeah, off, yeah. i know no, no, i know that yeah. i get that okay but good movie yeah it was good it was worth watching is it sad yeah it's uh, very sad i don't like watching sad things it's it's sad um it's yeah it is sad there's some like drama with like who who gets some of the payouts and who can and can't and it was a little disturbing so the fund was like a billion dollars, right? You would know. You just watched the movie, wasn't I for, it? I forget, but it was refilled a few times uh, because the, they had to keep doing it because, you know, all the all the rescue workers over time were developing. Yeah, yeah right, right, right. Serious medical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and, the first responders. And so they were they became, you know, 
thanks to some like a lot of good lobbying and actually John Stewart. John Stewart, I know. He yeah. yeah he uh they they passed legislation that made rescue workers who were experiencing like certain types of symptoms they could get in on the fund. Family. They could get in on the fund and you know, people have passed away because of like issues related to working there. And so they got access to the fund as well. Dude, freaking terrorists, man. I know. It's crazy because that's so... Do you remember... You were a senior, right? Because I was a sophomore. I was a junior. No, you are no. I was a sophomore. You were a senior. You're two years ahead of me. In, in, I was in 2001. Yeah, it was... I graduated in 2002. Right. So you were a senior. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I would have been a senior. Sorry. Yeah. Well, do you remember where you... I remember yeah. exactly where I was. Yeah. We were in the same building. I remember exactly where I was. I was in Woodshop. I was in choir. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about... Let me tell you about what happened in choir too. Yeah. Because it had been happening throughout the day, but like I physically saw the second plane hit the tower. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. In choir class. And right after that happened, the teacher turned off the TV and made us do the class. Really? I swear. And then we went. What to, the f- I know. And so, and then the, and so all morning, like we had been watching TV. Yeah. Like. And we knew, but we never, like, I never saw, like, the plane hit the tower, but I was in choir class when I saw the second plane hit the tower, and the choir teacher turned it off, and then we had to continue with the class, and then we went on to, after that class was over, we went on to the next class, and, like, all you did was watch TV. Yeah. And the next day, like, the administrators and the choir teacher were in the class, and they had to do this, like, he had to do this whole apology thing. Yeah, that's messed up. I know. It was messed up. I remember... I was in Schoenlebs. Yeah. I was in woodshop class. And I remember, so the first plane hit, TV's gone. He came out, dude. And he goes, freaking terrorists. And I, when I heard a plane hit the World Trade Center, I mean, I was a sophomore in high school. So I was probably, I was 16. I, I did not think it was terrorism whatsoever. Like that was a really foreign thing to me i was like what terrorism i was like this is laughable i'm like surely the pilots just screwed up and like winged like winged the building but and then he turned it on and then we all watched the second one hit Mm -hmm. hit live on tv and then he he went off and then i was like yeah it's probably terrorists (laughs) you know i'm like that's not a coincidence but I didn't have to like go back to class after that. Yeah, no, no. The, the, he turned the choir director turned off the TV and made us sing. Imagine that happening in nowadays where everyone has a smartphone. Yeah, like get out of here, choir yeah. guy. Yeah, and and I specifically remember the next day we because we had the class like every day. That what were you singing? I don't remember. Some jolly old. <laughs> I think I was making a clock. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember, I remember like the, the director and like the principal and vice principal and some other administrators being in there. And he had to like formally apologize for doing that. As I as, bet the parents, yeah. I bet the parents were as he should have. Oh, it's crazy. Um, yeah. Now, now, okay. You remember that day? What was the, the death count just on that day was about 3000. Mm, I don't, know. you don't need to look it up. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Three to five. And this is bringing it all back. Last summer, this summer, height of COVID, that many people a day are dying. Yeah. Isn't that insane? Mm-hmm. So I think about our government's response to the tragedy of 9-11. And we were losing that many people every day during COVID, during the peak of COVID. Yeah. That is insane. You know, so to put it in, in, in uh, here's a good point of reference. So every day, generally... Like one to two thousand people a day die of cardiovascular disease. You can look this up. I believe you. One to two thousand people a day die of cancer. Every single like we had a month or two where three thousand people a day were dying of COVID. Isn't that insane? Yeah. If you just stack the number of people dying every year on a graph, you see 2020 is like several standard deviations above. Cause I, cause at the beginning of the pandemic, there was this COVID is fake thing. Now everyone knows COVID isn't fake. Uh, rest in peace, Colin Powell. 
You know, he died. Yeah, he died of COVID complications due yesterday. to blood cancer. It was two days ago. Two days ago. Okay. <laughs> anyway, when COVID first started, there was like a, this whole COVID is fake thing. But if you just look, if you just look at the number of people dying in this country, like just you know, agnostic of any cause, it's insane. I mean, twice as many people on a given day are dying during yeah. the peak of COVID than yeah. normally die. Yeah. It's crazy. I know. When you put it in that perspective, like yeah. just a number of people dying on any given day, it's crazy. Well, we're at a point now where... It's not. It's obviously right now that's not the case. I'm talking about like the peak last summer no, and last winter. No, but we're at a, we're at a point... Uh, uh, we're at a point now with COVID where everybody knows of somebody who has died. It may, it may not be related to you, but knows of somebody who has died from I COVID. Don't. Really? Yeah. Oh, I know. I know like four or five. But like friends of friends? Yeah, like through work and stuff like that. I don't know. Uh, my buddy's dad died from COVID. I know. I know you. I know. I don't. No, it's going to be terrible if I do know someone had died and I'm not remembering it. But I don't know. But it's just sad that we're at a point where it's just like, uh, I know people that have died. Like, you know, not directly related to us, fortunately, but like, yeah, I don't, I had a, a buddy at work whose mom got like super bad hospitalized and I, but I, I don't know personally. I mean, I wasn't buddies with Colin Powell. <laughs> I'm trying to think now, cause now I'm going to feel like a dick if I, if I do and I'm forgetting about it, you know? Yeah. Maybe this will like be a wake up call too to like where we start like people just start paying attention to like deaths from like disease in general. Well, I don't know if it, yeah, I don't, it, it's really, it's usually not a big deal, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, usually the number one causes of death in this country, not across the world, in this country are cardiovascular disease followed by cancer. And you know, uh, Car accidents are up there, and you know it's super sad. Suicides up there, yeah. Suicides pretty high, which is really sad. But COVID, you know, for a long stretch was higher than all of them, and COVID now is still real high. It's not. It's not the number one leading cause of death, but it's still. I mean, in Ohio, we got what twenty, thirty, forty people a day that die just in Ohio. So across the U.S., you've got hundreds and hundreds. <laughs> Of people dying a day minimum across the world. You have thousands, if not tens of thousands of people dying from COVID every day. It's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, because like to me, the whole like, I mean, other than the fact that I got to wear a mask, which I don't care. I, I, my life's back to normal. I mean, ish, ish. I, it's the new normal. We're, I don't know if we're ever going back to how it was I, before. I, I don't know. Like there's, there's a lot of people saying like, this like we're gonna live with this for a long period of time. So we're gonna live with COVID for right. years. Right. So it might not be forever. Well, yeah. Will it be forever? Well, I I don't know. So, I mean, it'd be interesting to see. So if you pull out the spikes, mm -hmm. right? So we're coming down off a spike right now. Right. So, but first off, uh, the next two months, great time to travel. <laughs> great time to go out. Because we're going to be in a, like a lag phase the next two months. If the, if, if if so, we we've had uh, we had a peak last summer, a peak last winter, and then this current peak. So we've had three like big waves, other than the initial wave la in March of twenty twenty. So we're at we're coming down off of we'll say wave four if you include the first wave in March. So you had a wave in March. You had a wave last summer. You had a wave starting last winter, going into spring, and we had this current wave which started, I don't know, two, three months ago. So we're on wave four coming down. This wave was Delta variant. So yeah. there'll be another wave. I just don't know how big it'll be. But if timing is consistent, which it has been with the preceding four waves, we're you got two and a half months of good. So we might get some like... Uh, so January... We might get some mask policies changed for a few months. Yeah, and, and then they'll come back. Yeah. yeah, but so January, February is is when we're is when things will start to churn back up again, which kind of lines up with like flu season and that kind of stuff. Um, I wonder like what what are like the estimations for like herd immunity between people who it's are... It's never back? happening. Really? No. I mean, the amount of people that getting it is not high enough and certainly the amount of people getting vaccinated is not high enough. So herd immunity ain't ever going to happen. Uh, broadly speaking, yeah. places like Vermont where vaccination rates like 
certainly you're going to get good little hot spots, but mm-hmm. you're where I mean, they said you needed to get to 70% immunity, which would mean with vaccine and people getting infected. And we know that both the vaccine and would you get infected with COVID that immunity doesn't last forever. Right. I wonder what the, you know, uh, maybe six months, seven months, eight months. If you, I wonder if you put, if you put together the number of like vaccinated plus people who have immunity, right. You got to get to 70, 80%. <laughs> I wonder how close we are to that. We're probably close, but we ain't. What's our our vaccination rate? I think is fifty percent. Yeah, which is laughable. So that's not high enough, and the number of people getting it isn't high enough. I don't believe to like supplement the vaccination rate to get to that. So think about it: seventy percent. That means now we're, I'm we're biased when I'm going to tell you this, but so let's say seven to eight out of 10 people need to either be vaccinated or have gotten COVID. Mm -hmm. Now to us, because we live in an area where the vaccination rate's like a hundred, that would be fine. But over the, you know, over the broadly speaking over the U S that's not the case. And then you're you're always going to people traveling and like, so it's never going away. Yeah. So we're going to get boosters. We're going to, they're going to be put in it with the flu vaccine. It's just never going away. I mean, it's not going to go away in the next four, five, six, seven, eight years. I don't think. You know, who knows? You know, um, more interesting thing that's happening is what's happening uh, macroeconomically with the inflation rates. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. Have you seen what, what is, what is driving inflation? Well, it's, the, it's, the, well, this is a great topic of conversation. The U S are you referring to the 71.2% vaccination? Really? Rate? Is that fully vaccinated or both shots? 71%. That sounds high to me. Seventy-one yeah. percent, uh, just getting one of the shots. I might buy that, but seven. I mean, Ohio's fifty percent, and Ohio's by far not the worst state. I mean, you got states like in the South, dude, where it's like I think twenty, thirty, forty percent. I mean, it's real bad down there. Anyway, are you talking about the container ships? Have you seen what's happening? Did we talk about this last week on the podcast? Uh, I don't know. Do you know what's happening with the container ships? I mean, you can educate me, maybe. They're all parked off of Huntington Beach, California. Oh yeah, I knew about that. I mean, did, yeah, did you see what they they're trying to do to? Uh, basically, the Biden administration. I don't know what you'd call it. Worked out a deal so like all the ports are operating twenty four seven. Yeah, I said did see that. I did see that. Um, but to get back to your question of what's causing inflation, you know, according to the Fed. You know, supply chain disruptions are what's causing inflation. Well, no, no, supply, like, what, there are specific industries that are causing inflation right now. Like what? Um, let me pull up the Shipping? List. No, 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 no. Like, <laughs> specific products. Um, let well, me I know, up. used cars, I, man. Great time to sell your car. <laughs> uh, Not a good time to buy a car, but a great time to sell your car. If you don't need a car, now's the time to sell your car. Yeah, I heard the list the other day. Let me pull it up. It's are you talking about the CPI? Um, so there's a, a report yeah. that the um, I think it's the Department of Labor produces uh, every month, every quarter, every month called the Consumer Price Index. And the, yeah. they look at um, cost of various goods over months to see in like inflationary pressures. Um, so I looked up. Oh, man, I just looked. I was curious too. about. Um, I forget what it's like. What hits what hits you the most is like groceries and food. Yeah, right? I, I don't think it was groceries. No, and groceries food and food. Right ain't They're not up yet. Um, used cars are the most inflated things. I know that gas is getting up there. Um, luckily in Ohio, it's not that bad. I did see, did you see the highest gas prices? Do you see how much they are in California? There's a, there's a pocket in California, eight bucks a gallon. Yeah. Okay. Inflation is widely driven by stuff related to the travel industry right now. Yeah. Uh, uh airlines, hotels. there's a bunch of goods yeah. sitting on container ships in the Pacific ocean. People want to buy those goods. People can't supply demand. Demand outstrips supply. Prices go up. Um, no, no, I'm, no, no, not related to that. Just like in general stuff re- because it's in a deficit. Like people aren't traveling right now as much. Okay. So that's driving inflation as well. Wait, what? Yeah. People aren't traveling. So that's driving inflation. Yeah. You got to explain that one to me. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. Hold on a second. Let me, <laughs> let me read you the. <laughs> I, I thought you were saying the transportation industry, including shipping, freight, they're not able to get goods to people soaring, fast enough. Soaring used car prices. Yeah, so I know used cars public are public transportation. 
Public transportation prices are up. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. There's been a heavy demand for used cars. People don't want to fly or take public transportation. Why is that causing inflation? Because people don't want to fly? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, because it's driving up prices on other things. Because because people don't want to fly? I guess. No. Yeah, I've heard it. I, I read another thing a little while ago about how the travel industry is driving up inflation. I would I would agree that the shipping industry might be, but I don't know. People not getting on planes... If anything, that's just going to drive the prices. Home of appliances pl- are up that's 20, interesting. 27%. Probably has to do with shipping. That's probably shipping yeah. for sure. I think yeah. most consumer Furn- goods. Well, here you go. Furniture. Yeah. Washers, dryers, furniture, yeah. And bikes. Yeah, they're all sitting on ships <laughs> yeah. in the Pacific. <laughs> uh, now, the good the good news is everyone says it's, it's transitory. means this inflation is, they're now calling it sticky, but they're saying the inflation is not going to. Not going to last. But I haven't, you know, honestly. It's, it goes in waves. I mean, it's always up and down, right? No. It always just slowly goes up, which right. is a sign of a good economy, actually. Yeah. And mild inflation is actually a sign of a good economy. Um, but I'm not like, like I went grocery shopping the other day. Now, I will say, dude, beef, beef prices. Beef is terrible. Beef prices are through the roof. I know. it's it's uh, like What's that about? I, I don't I don't get Cause that. Because pork prices are not. Chicken prices are not. Yeah. I, eggs I, are not. I think it has to do with consumption. But Hold dude, on. I went to, I tried to buy, I bought a brisket in July. It was $100. I know. At we, Costco. They're normally like 35 I bought a, uh, I bought a uh, chuck roast last week to make stew meat out of. And like normally like a chuck roast this big is like, like 20, nine, 20, 30 bucks. No, 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 no. It's like nine to $12. How and much was, like was 25 it? 25 to 30. Yeah. Um, do you know what that means? So we okay. just switched to pork. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pork shoulders were still like 10 bucks at the, you know, cattle shortages. It's a result of three factors. Panic stricken consumers buying up deep freezers. Obviously, obviously people buying too much freaking stuff and hoarding it. Okay. Slow production and meat packing plants. Okay. That okay, so that's supply and demand. Yeah. So there ain't supply. Demand, demand stay the same, if not gone up, so prices go up. It all goes back to supply and demand. Freaking Adam Smith. He's always right. But I was saying, like, I went grocery shopping. Cows are not sitting on container ships. No, no, they are not. No, no, no. This is frozen beef. The, might be. I don't know. I think the beef. Uh, which, which I think the beef we eat in the U.S. comes from the U.S. <laughs> I don't think we import any beef. Um, no, but that actually brings up a good point related to pork, though, because I think pork our, prices are good still. Well, I think that there's a really high demand for pork right now because we're exporting so much of it too. Well, and, and if beef is super expensive, people are going to switch to pork. Yeah. You know, like I am, like I was going to do a brisket. Uh, uh-uh. I'm going with pork shoulders, dude. Half, like, hey, 10% the cost. that's a win-win. It is a win-win. It is a win-win. But like I was saying, I went grocery shopping. Everyone's screaming about inflation. But the thing is, you're not going to notice like 4%. Oh. You're not. But like, I was looking at the prices of the things I was buying and they didn't seem, they didn't seem more expensive. I, I noticed the beef. I noticed the beef for sure. Yeah. I, I didn't. I, I generally, other than for smoking, I do not buy beef. Really? Yeah. I'm a white meat guy. It's. it's I mean, it's it's better for you. It is, but I mean, I don't buy it's much cheaper, of it. But it's cheaper and it's better for you. Like I'm a. I don't do ground beef. I do ground turkey. You know, it's just, it's cheaper. It's healthier. It's more like calorically dense. What restless just came into the chat and he said, strength does not come from physical capability. It comes from an indomitable will. (laughs) You know what he's quoting, right? (laughs) Hey, restless, you got to come down here, come into the studio, man. You haven't been here. You haven't been down here a while. Doesn't your daughter have a volleyball tournament down here or something? Come on. Okay. Oh, we're get, we're getting an update on brisket prices. Josh has a, has a ten pound brisket in his freezer. He'll sell for fifty bucks. Josh, how much was that ten pound pound brisket? Put it in the chat. Evan Hammond has uh, brisket is eighty bucks at my grocery store. Yeah, that, dude, that's, that's expensive. Can, uh, that's Canadian. What's the Canadian exchange? It's because it's gonna be less. Yeah, American. Yeah. Okay. I went to Costco. And I bought a brisket and I had it in the checkout line and I thought it was only 40 bucks. Costco, it was a hundred dollars. Had I known it was a hundred dollars, I would have put it back, but I, I just picked up a brisket and I was like, Oh, it'll be, and this was in July. It was a hundred bucks. Get out of here. Doing pork shoulders. Uh, what, what else? Um, I was trying to look at the CPI, the consumer price index report. Uh, like what else was up? Josh said it was $38 at Kroger for a 10 pounder. That's, that's not bad. Okay. Yeah. That that's normal. 
three dollars and eighty cents uh, a pound. <laughs> Lucas Malone says deer tags are twenty bucks a piece. Just dude, saying. true story. Yeah. I actually I was listening to a meat eater podcast where they were talking about this, and they're like, "Well, I'll just go hunt." You know? Yeah. It's by far the cheapest thing. I was like, dude, if if beef is ten bucks a pound, <laughs> buckle up. <laughs> You're shooting it. How much does a slug I'll cost? Help you, I'll help you. I'll help you field dress it. <laughs> you got experience in these things. <laughs> How much does it cost with the tag and the butchering to do that? Like a hundred bucks. Butchering was is like a hundred to hundred twenty bucks. And the tags what? 30, 20, 20, 30. 20, 30, something like that. And then it was. And then your slugs license. A dollar. Yeah, a license like, is what? I forget. I forget. I don't 20 know. bucks, 30 bucks. Yeah, something like that. So you think 150 all in for a deer? Yeah, and you could process it yourself. Like no, it, no, no. You and I are not doing that. I know. <laughs> but if you wanted to cheap it, be cheaper. No, cheaper. it's absolutely worth $100 to have a butcher do it. But how much? So for 150 bucks, how many pounds of meat do you think? Yeah, like, like what? I don't know. 30, 40? Yeah, 30, 40. Pounds? Like for the small deer that so I So it's still like three or four bucks a pound. Yeah. Okay. That's cheaper than beef, though. Uh, and way healthier. Mm. Doesn't taste as good. Doesn't taste as good. <laughs> but it's still good. Yeah. Um, all right, we have not gotten to the Brian. I'm so thing. I'm so sick of Brian Laundry. Okay, he's dead now. How like, do you think he died? They haven't released it. Gators. No. Do gators get him? I don't know. There's just teeth left, apparently. <laughs> they say human every time they say we found human remains and they don't say we found a body, I think, okay, somebody got mutilated. Did they release the cause of death for Gabby Petito? Because mm-hmm. they said human Strangulation. Okay, so why don't they say we found a body? Yeah, it was strangulation. I don't get that. They say we found human remains. That, to me, means you found an arm and, like, half a leg. Yeah. So it's, so have they released cause of death for what? I, what? Don't, I don't want to say it out loud. What? I mean, I'm going to say it out loud when you hand me the computer. The rest is coming. Oh, yeah. We'll get Bryce down here. Is Bryce in the chat? So we can, Everyone can read the comment. It's not like by you not saying no, it. No, I just don't want to draw attention. Bryce and his ladies. Bryce. <laughs> ladies, plural. I think Bryce is in here. He, sometimes he comes to these. We need to debrief on the marathon, too, by the way. <laughs> Scott Foster. Brian Laundry was found next to his duplex. <laughs> <laughs> was in Florida. Oh, he had like a our call and a duplex. No, it, he did have a backpack and like didn't he have a journal or yeah, something. Yeah, like the rumor is the journal was soaking wet and they're trying to like dry it out. So okay, um, I wanted to recap on the marathon today. Yeah. So Andy, so we ran uh, Andy ran his <coughs> first marathon last yeah. Sunday. Uh, what what do you think? I mean, did you reflect on the experience? Yeah, what yeah. did you think about it? Yeah, I, it's uh, kind of a big deal. Yeah, I, the uh, first one especially. Yeah, I, when I built up the last three miles, especially being your first one, was it as bad as I built it up to be? It was worse. Like it's real bad. Yeah. Um. So, I I met my goal, which was good. My goal was to do it in under four and a half hours, and I did. So what that, was your pace? Like nine fifty? Nine fifty overall. Okay. But nice. See, but see, here's where I screwed up royally. You went too fast. Yeah, my pace on the hat on the first half. Yeah, you took off, man. I saw you go. My pace on the first half was like nine twenty. That was a little hot. Yeah, a little hot. And I remember running the first half, being like, "Man, I'm going too fast. I gotta slow down because I'm gonna gas out." And that's all right, though. What yeah. you're describing is like what yeah. everybody does. I know, but I was like, okay, when on my previous long runs, like when I hit the 20, 21 mile mark on the longest runs I had done. Like I felt like crap there. So I was like, okay, I'll make it to 20. And then it's really going to be a struggle this time. I was like at 15 and I was like, Oh my God. Oh wow. Really? I was like, I was at 15. I was like, this is like, I'm, I'm like looking for food. I'm like, really? Oh, that's not good. Yeah. What? Uh, and, um, it was, I think it was like right around, like when you come down through campus and go around the shoe and yeah, you, that's like and, 16 and then you go up into Arlington. Yeah. And that climb sucks that I, that was for me the hardest part of the run. Hey, shout out to dad's backpack. It's where he passed me. <laughs> yeah. But then you passed him. Back. Then I passed it back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that, that in my opinion was the roughest part. But then, um, once I made, so your house was at like mile 20, 20 22. And a half. I felt good until then. Oh really? Yeah. No, no. So I was slow, man. So yeah, I got to your house, which it was, a, it was 
Honestly, from campus to your house, it was a struggle. Really? My house is downhill. I know. Yeah. It was, it was a struggle. And then I uh, I got food at your place. Like, Alex, Did you stop? I Yeah, I stopped for like two seconds because I had some gels there. And, I, and uh, your wife gave me a little water. Mm. So I had a little water and I had some food. And so I, I grabbed that and went running. And then I ate that while I run, ran down towards... Um, that stretch and then dude you know it's the worst is when you climbing hit, back up no when you climb up and then you hit the cobblestones oh, the cobblestones <laughs> are awful so the, the the thing that got it's like mile 24 no, and you hit cobblestones the and thing, you're like your feet like dude you're like really the thing, the thing that got me from like 23 to the end was like there was this like three or four old women and i was just like you're just I, I, them? I just got right in there and i was just like please help me please help me please help me <laughs> that's really funny um but so, uh, yeah, yeah it was uh did you enjoy it yeah i did i mean I, you're not gonna enjoy the last few miles yeah know, it's a I, marathon I, I did really enjoy it and um you know uh uh it's uh you know i felt like shit the rest of the day but um, i felt okay your first one dude yeah your, your next one it'll be so much easier yeah, it. Um, At least you don't have to go to a funeral. Yeah, I like know. I had to do after I, my first. I one. was I, when I, when we were waiting for you. I was telling mom about that. And I was like, I don't know how he did. This. It was awful. Know. Yeah, I had to go home, shower, put on like not sweatpants, put on like khakis and like a like a you know go to a funeral, then go to a funeral, sit through the funeral, and then we had we did a thing afterwards, and I was just like a shell of a human, yeah. you know. Yeah, and then um, the rest of that day, I could barely walk. And then um, the next the Monday, I could uh, I I could get around, but uh, I still felt it going up and down stairs. Now, oh I'm, yeah, Monday was bad. Yeah, I was a hundred percent by Wednesday. Yeah, I'm. I was. I mean, I ran today and I was fine. Yeah, I was. I was probably a hundred percent by like Wednesday as well. So um, definitely, uh, yeah, it was fun. I uh, it you know it was what was. Like the first half is fun because there's so many people running. Right. And then after everyone, like, then you're just on your own. I know the it really half. narrows down the yeah. second half. So, uh, I convinced Annie we're doing a 50 K <laughs> in seven weeks. So, uh, we'll, you know, 31 miles tack on another six. We're going to go way slower. Yeah. And, and, and we're going to run it together. I know. And it's going to be, since it's an ultra marathon, we are doing like the run walk strategy. We're walking up the hills. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. And I've run this course Yeah, and it's, it's 4,000 feet of climbing over 31 miles. So it's not flat and the hills, it's like Zaleski Hills. Like they are steep. Yeah. But I mean, to your point, like this is, we're in good shape right now. We're in good shape. We're going to get some new sick trail shoes <laughs> and uh, we got eight and a half hours to do 31 miles. So we could hike that. Could you no, hike that? No, no, you That's couldn't. That's like four miles an hour. No, you couldn't. Yeah. No, but we'll, we'll maintain like a, I bet we'll do a 13 minute pace overall. Okay. Uh, hey, if we can, if we, if we can get it done between six and seven hours. We that, will absolutely, we'll be done before six. Really? No, probably not. <laughs> I think it's going to take six and a half. No, it'll probably take like six and a half. Yeah. It'll be fun. All right. All right, everybody. <laughs> I feel like, are there any comments? I feel like there's, I've seen a lot of comments and we just ignore them. And um, so like we could do a typical live stream where we go through the comments. Yeah. And, oh, here we go. We can both do this, but it, Scott Foster said, Andy, what was your pre and post meal? So I'll do mine. Then you do yours. I'll do it. Yep. So my pre-meal, um, we actually went over to some friend's house and I had a bunch of uh, chili <laughs> and salad. No, actually, it was turkey or it was a it was right. a it was a relatively lean chili, and it was awesome because I was looking for like a healthier, slow burning carb instead yeah, yeah, of a bunch yeah. of beans. Yep. So yeah, that, beans you should be farting the whole time. <laughs> I don't That's care. okay. What was your post? Post. <laughs> um, I actually. What was weird? I actually wasn't that hungry, which is bad. No, bad that that's common. But I had a, uh, I had been saying I wanted Jimmy John's, and I got like a what the sixteen a sixteen inch Jimmy John sub. Okay, like roast beef and stuff. Okay, it was. I mean that that's not what I'm craving after a marathon. Yeah, the day. I, I I'm I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't as good as I thought it was gonna be. No, no, you gotta go classic. So my pre meal, I do the, I eat the same thing before every marathon now if I can. I saute and skillet up a bunch of potatoes, yeah. sausage, and cheese. Oh, I, with and like I, some sour cream. Yeah. It's like it's just like a it's like a big 
a healthy <coughs> carbs, fat yeah. slop that I eat. Yeah. Post crushed pizza and wings. Yeah. And it was awesome. Yeah. I was either going to go pizza, but I was for some reason like pizza was whole, pretty good. The week before I was just craving like a, like a deli. So it's so weird. I don't know. Why. <laughs> just runs around like, man, I want some Jimmy Jazz. <laughs> what yeah that's yeah. pretty funny yeah you no know, that's funny there's bit you know you know how you got the videos of you like crossing the finish line i haven't looked at them yet oh mine's awful i know I'm just did like, you get the I've, pictures yeah but my video of crossing the finish line is just like get me out of here just like oh my god can we just can we just be done you looked like what i looked like after my first one just like collapsed like yeah. sitting down yeah it's your first one man imagine what we'll feel like after the ultra I think, and then, feel and, and then we get a drive an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's on a Saturday, I might, I might call it <coughs> staying there. Let's um, I might make a night out of it. This, let's pay the three hundred bucks and get your Tesla self driving mode for the way home. No, no, I don't need to pay three hundred bucks. It, it, when we got on the freeway, it drives itself <laughs> without. Yeah, no, no, it's great. I did that. I did that when I was really hungover once, and just put it on the self drive. And it's so much better. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. All right. Let's wrap this up. Okay. Okay. There are like four things I wanted to talk about that we're, we're just going to, I'm going to table that for next week. So next Friday, we have a special Halloween spooktacular, <laughs> calling it spooktacular Halloween live stream. Got some fun things planned. I was, I was like, <laughs> they're right. All right. I'm not going to talk about it. We'll save it for next Friday. All right. I had some like hilarious things to do live <laughs> Halloween themed, but I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to save it. All right. Okay. Next Friday, everybody probably the same time. Yeah. Ish. I don't know. Maybe I'll actually post it. Spooktacular podcast next Friday. Um, all right. Anything else? No. Nope. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Right, bye. <laughs> you had a, uh, is it going the whole time? No, I just turned it on. It's like a spooky button. Oh. <laughs> Here we go.